This war is not about nameless, faceless people killing other nameless, faceless people. It's about little ones who get caught in a crossfire, or it's about doctors who go out in the streets. And tell us about the people you remember from that day. I think there was one boy in particular. Well, I think what I'd like to say first is that I think there's such a misunderstanding about the war in Syria because since it's been called a civil war, I think everyone imagines it's half the population killing the other half, and it is not. Yeah. This is state-sponsored mass murder and oppression. It's a war on civilians, not a civilian, not a civilian war. You know what I mean? And and as a result, the civilians, children, and doctors and nurses and everyone else have been the ones who've been paying the price. So during this time, um, I was in one of the hospitals, the, the one that you'd seen, which doesn't look, really look like a hospital, right? Because it wasn't really, it was a, ho a house we had converted into a hospital. Um, and suddenly we, I just felt like I was on some sort of Hollywood stage. Yeah. It was such an apocalyptic sight um, with all these severely burnt children coming in from a 10-year-old up to a 17-year-old. Um, and we had no idea what it was. They were all covered in this thick white powder dust and walking in like zombies. You know that really famous picture of the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese girl who'd been napalm because it, they, they, it was like an incendiary weapon. It was like a ball of, of fire that came down on their schoolyard. And, um, and I had just never seen anything like that in all my medical training. And, and it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking, but the, for me, the most devastating thing was that I had trained all my life for a day like that. I had the knowledge, I had the skill and ability to treat them, but I didn't have the resources that I needed. Yeah. You know what I mean? I should have been able to give them oxygen and sedation and painkillers and put breathing tubes down them and put them in, an, in a safe ambulance and take them to a hospital that can look after them. And instead, I had to send them in pain, suffocating in the back of their parents' cars to get them to safety. And 10 kids that died that day because I, who could have saved their lives, didn't have the tools I needed to do that. And that breaks my heart.